what's up y'all it's peaches i'm back with another video today we're gonna focus on getting the perfect french tip nail okay we are going to really be focusing on doing the smile line which is this nude part that you see i've already done one hand which is how i like to do it i like to do just one hand and then i'll go and do the other hand so that way everything is dry enough to do the white because if it's not dry you're gonna have a lot of problems okay so for my first bead what I like to do is I don't work any wetter any drier than normal I just kind of set it where the natural nail and the nail tip kind of meet and I spread it out so that way I can basically fit the whole cuticle area side to side basically as you see because when I first started doing French it was really really hard for me to understand um, how I don't know it was just really hard to understand how to like make the shapes because I do everything with my brush so it's hard for me to like understand how to do this cuticle area and make the shape without making the actual cuticle area super duper bulky because I was very scared that the nail will break um, so this is basically what I do so I go ahead and I lay the first bead down and make the approximate shape that I think it is and I continue to compare it to the hand that's already done because when I'm first working on the first hand, I compare each nail like to each other so that way that whole hand is like symmetrical and then I will take that hand and as you can see compare it against what I'm doing now and then as I go on to the next fingers, I will continue to like compare finger by finger and both hands together if that makes sense. You'll see what I'm saying. So once I feel like the general shape and length is cool down there, I will add my actual cuticle bead. Um, you guys can see that I set it close to the cuticle and then I kind of just push it in and I use my brush to like tuck the acrylic into the cuticles so that way it's not flooded but actually everything is covered and um, there's a nice proper apex there. If you can look on the other hand that's already done you can see the apex is really not too big but not too small. Um, this is like a medium length of nails so you really don't need one that's out of, out of control. Basically, you just need something that's going to actually give it the support and strength that it needs to without any problems, you know. So, here I'm just making sure there's no lumps, no bumps, like the apex uh, where the cuticle area is at blends right nicely into the uh, bottom. And sometimes if it's not, if there's like a little divot, I'll go ahead and fill that in. Because also at the same time, you have to remember that you're basically building the nail in two halves. So... You don't want to make that like you don't want to make the smile line too thick either because you're gonna have like a lot of trouble when you are adding whatever color tip it is like when it comes to all the filing stuff it's gonna be a hassle so you really kind of have to just find that balance between how thick you need it for strength but also how thin you need it for like aesthetic purposes it's it's once you figure that out you will be set every time so um, as you can see, here we go again, second finger. I am going to make the approximate shape and length that I'm thinking that it is, just based off of looking. Um, you guys, I'm sorry, my computer fan is going on and I can't do nothing about that, so ignore that noise. And if you hear any other noise, my dude is in the shower, so yeah. So then I go ahead and I compare it to the finger that's already done. See how I did that? So I use this as a guide and then I use the other hand as a guide so that I can have all 10 nails come out pretty much as exactly the same as possible. Now this looks like it's like really time consuming and stuff. I'm not gonna lie, my first French set, set that I did like this last year sometime over the summer or some shit like that, it took me like so many hours. Like I legitimately mean like four hours because it was on a longer length as well and I was shook and I was nervous. But I do French so much now that if it's a like a super short set I can get it done within like an hour 15 minutes and if it's on the longer side I can get it done within two hours so so just keep comparing this is the best way that I can say how to get like the perfect smile line okay um, you'll also keep in mind that sometimes there might be one finger that started out like oh, okay I like that shape but then you realize you made all the other fingers a different shape or they're slightly off you can just go in and fix that one finger with acrylic and I'll show you how I did that because I think with the index finger on this hand I kind of realized that I didn't like 
like I didn't like it as much as I thought or I didn't think it was as symmetrical as it could be or it was a little shorter than all the rest so I will show you guys how to go ahead and fix that as well and here we are again you guys when it comes to the cuticle area do not overload it with acrylic because you want like you want french tip to look super natural like of course you want all your sets to look super natural like it's just growing fabulously from somebody cuticles but I feel like french tip is supposed to look like extra supernatural because I mean it's french tip like come on you know so you you want to make sure like around the cuticles like see how I'm doing this tucking it making sure nothing is like very bulbous or too round because it will give it a certain look if it is and it's gonna be a look that you don't want so here I am continuing to compare I like to go back and forth back and forth um, you can see like there is a lot of time a lot of time for it to dry and for you to fix stuff now I will say that comes with time and knowing like what you're doing and knowing like your liquid to powder ratios and things because when I first started doing French I think I was working a little bit too dry and with beads that were too big and then things would end up bulky and they would dry so quick that I didn't have time to fix it but as you can see I'm still having time with this middle finger and it's been almost a couple of minutes you see so um, here's what I'm talking about see on the index I decided that I think I wanted to make it a little bit longer just a tad bit longer because from doing all the comparing I realized it is slightly shorter than the finger next to it and I think just a tad um, shorter than something on the other hand so I just extended it a little bit because as I said I'm a person I like symmetry like I need everything to look it, as symmetrical and perfect as possible so this is like my routine basically so that way I can have that result I don't have to do this too often normally like I get it right pretty much um, just because I do it so often but every now and then like you know depending if you and the client are talking or if you know you're tired just different different factors you'll have to go in and maybe like just fix one finger and that's fine okay so um, another tip to like doing French is leave yourself room on the sides like okay you see how my smile line has like room on the sides basically you need to like give yourself a decent amount of room on the sides so that way when you add the white when you file you're not gonna file it to look like there's nothing on the sides like I don't know how to explain it but if you've seen people that do French and it's like how do you explain it like you can't see the white coming up on the sides it's really just on the very tip basically I don't prefer that look um, every so often depending on the person's like finger shape or the shape of the French smile line that goes with their finger it can happen it's not like impossible for it to happen or whatever but I just don't prefer that so for me personally I like to assess the person's nail beds and then and their length sometimes I make a French that's like way more oval sometimes something that's a little more circular but um, yeah just so that way you can see the white on the sides there's just so many different things you can do with French to help you figure out your style okay and yes I sped the rest of it up for this part because I feel like you've seen you've seen it in such detail up to this point that I feel like you guys could be able to like understand and see what I'm doing at this point but yeah so you just please keep in mind the people the people's the persons the clients finger shape the length of the nails the widths of the nail beds all that because a lot of times what I've noticed is like the thing that happens the most of why French doesn't look as nice as it could is a lot of times it's just too bulky like like plain and simple it's just too bulky like I said I've been there we've all been there it does take time to learn how to debulk your French and make it look very natural and not so like wide around the cuticle area but um yeah I hope this guy's oh yeah I cannot talk I'm sorry I'm not eight today and I'm just kind of all over the place so I hope this helps you guys learn something about how to get um, a really nice French so I'm basically gonna let you guys 
um, finish watching me do the pinky and the thumb. And then I will come back when I'm actually filing the smile line. Because... That's where you're going to really, if, if you're struggling with this part and it's, you're really, really not able to get a really crisp French line with just your brush, then the filing, which is the next step, is going to really help you with that. So I will be right back. Okay, so I am back. Um, there's still noise in the background, so I apologize for that. But, now this part with the smile line, what you will need to do is take your file, your nail file, and just gently go around. I know it looks like it's kind of rough and stuff, but it is kind of an awkward angle to do because the nail tip is right there. So be gentle because you can cut through the nail tip and it will cause a hole and stuff. And, I mean, nothing's going to happen from it, but it just increases the chance of, like, bending and shit before you're even ready to like you know do certain stuff or whatever so uh, yeah just be gentle this is gonna really really help you crispin up your smile line if something about it is like weird or whatever and then after I'm trying to think oh yeah I'm sorry I, I sped it up I forgot so uh, yeah and I still compare because my whole thing is my theory is when you compare everything so much, it's going to give you, like, such a nicer result than if you just kind of guesstimate. And I feel like a lot of people do guesstimate, which there's nothing wrong with. But I feel like to get the very best results, you need to continue to compare everything throughout the process. Because sometimes things might dry a little differently than you thought. Like, you know, mistakes can happen. You might have not realized that something bumped itself or whatever while stuff was drying. Or, shoot you just don't know okay you just really maybe you're just not that great at this particular style yet and you're trying to figure out you know what to do how to fix stuff the only way that you will be able to learn is if you compare what you got going on and you'll figure out which nails look the best how do I stick to that look basically you know so this particular look is like a more natural oval that I'm making sure it's shaped into 
um, like I said, I do French so often that this is really just like second nature to me. So what I can do with my brush, it's already pretty even up. But I just like to do this to make sure it also, there is like a nice shelf basically is also what you're doing. Um, so that way when you put the white, which you guys are about to see soon, but um, when you put the white, it will add more structure. So I also look at it from this angle to just make sure that none of it is crooked. Because that used to be my problem too. I will look and child my oval will not be dead center it will be slightly off to the left like girl what is you even doing okay so the next step is adding the whites now this i only showed two fingers because i feel like this is pretty self-explanatory but i like to do it so that way that much white does not get on the nude because the more white or whatever color is on the nude the more you will have to file the more that increases like divots and the less strength because sometimes you could file so much so long or so hard that you don't realize that you are thinning out the nails so much that it's just gonna break in the end so this is what i like to do i'm a person that really likes application so i just try to do my application the best that i can and you will thank me later because with french i like i said you don't want a nail that's too bulky so you want to keep whatever color at the tip when it's coming up to that top of the smile line on the sides you want to make sure that it's pretty thin right there because you do not want that area where like the finger any area like that's by the finger like this part that i'm doing right here right here right here right here you don't want that bulky so you can see i'm putting it on like so gently patting it patting it i'm not working super wet because i don't want it to be running all over the place but i'm not working super dry because i don't want it to just dry like a bulge right there so I will say that is my number one tip for this part in preventing or into making a really nice French tip, okay, because this is crucial. And then I basically continue as it's drying, even if I'm on another finger, as it's drying, I still will wipe the sides and make sure because, you know, sometimes things that are not all the way dry, they can shift a little bit. We don't want no shift and I want that thing to look crisp if possible so um yeah you can see from the side that i'm just it's really not that thick you guys i don't know how to explain it you will figure out which thickness is good for you but you can see from the side that the white and the nude are pretty much level and anything that's not level i just kind of gently swiped it away so when i go ahead and file i'm not gonna have to file the nude that much like it's gonna be really easy and pretty quick you see so same thing with this finger like i said it's pretty self-explanatory i feel like everybody pretty much knows this part and i think the part that's hard about it is making sure it does does not get bulky by the sides of the fingertips um because like i said that is one of the things that i notice about french tips sometimes and it's something that used to happen to me sometimes i don't prefer that look i, I don't think anybody prefers a bulky french tip but it's just kind of what happens when you first is learning. So I like to go ahead and just push it up to the shelf to make it even. Basically like even thickness there. And then anything that's left over, I kind of strategically swipe it and move it and place it. So that way, oh there's a hair. So that way um, it will be so easy for um, filing purposes. So I really, really hope this is helping somebody because when I first started French, honestly, it, it was a trial and error process. Oh my God, y'all, hold on, somebody is calling. Okay, y'all, I'm sorry. Like I was saying, it is a trial and error process. You have to find the method that works best for you because I'm gonna be honest, I saw so many videos and so many things about how to do French and when I was actually physically doing it, it was still, it was still like not the most easiest I don't want to say it wasn't an easy concept to grab. The concept is there, but it's just a fact of like making sure nothing is hella bulky, nothing is too fat, and that it just looks natural, you know? So as you can see, I went back to the pinky because it was still drying. Make sure that the shape is all to the good. And I'm just patting those sides down, y'all. And after this step, I go around the cuticles with my e-file, basically. Um, I don't show that in here. I do show some filing, basically, so you guys can see, like, get the gist of it. But I'll go around the cuticles with the e-file, okay? 
and that will take that will help like file the sides without filing the sides basically so here's the full application okay so as you can see they're already e-filed you can see the sides are not bulky so when i go ahead and file and do this because i like to file the shape before i take away some of the white like i do a little bit of the debulking on the sides like this and then um i will go in and i will not scratch off the white i will file off the white so the reason why i kind of do it bounce back and forth like that is because i want to make sure i don't shape too much to where the white on the sides no longer shows so i just when i do this i just keep in mind like hey girl don't forget you need to expose the white which is why i keep it thin because i can pretty much see um as i'm doing that i can see like okay i'm not filing too much to where the white on the sides is completely gone because you don't want that so i hand file with this part i just i don't like using the e-file um, I feel like a hand file like gives you better results as far as like smoothness and stuff and you can see I look from all angles to make sure that everything is smooth and intact but you see nothing's over filed nothing's under filed it's giving a very very nice nice crisp French and yeah this is pretty much my routine on what I do so you can see like you can see the the white where i'm filing you can still see the white on the sides but it's not all the way gone basically because you don't want to you don't want to get rid of the white on the sides it just kind of takes away you know so we're on to the next we're going to basically do the next thing and you see how easy the white came off because y'all when you just basically take the excess you know you level it out level the white out with the new and then the excess you just kind of like feather away it makes it so easy because then there's not like a really thick block of white and it will make it so much easier for you to file away the color that's on top of the nude okay you see this look at this come on now it will make your arm hurt less it's a lot less work it's easier so yes this is pretty much it um, I pretty much only show these two fingers of filing because, I mean, you guys, you guys get it. I don't, y'all, honestly, this video was older, so this is kind of, I have a bunch of French tip pictures and videos and stuff. I don't know which one goes exactly for the finished product of this, because this was a while ago. But I do have, like, the finished product without gloss, so that's what I'm getting ready to show you guys. Oh, you guys already saw it in the beginning, but... Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful for you guys. Please stay tuned for the next video. Have a good rest of your evening, night, day, whenever you was watching. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next video.